I want to do an example that uses more of an analytical approach when we deal with the problems that involve particle equilibrium. Here we have four forces that are acting on our little gray dot. Force P is 500 pounds acting down, and force Q is 650 pounds acting down and to the right. We also have two unknown forces, FA and FB. FA is pulling the particle up and to the left, which is along the same line of action as force Q. Force FB is pushing the particle to the right. We are told that this particle is in equilibrium and that we need to determine the magnitudes of FA and FB. We can't use the triangle or the force triangle approach here, but we can take what we've learned about rectangular components and apply it to this problem. In order for this particle to be in equilibrium, all the forces in the x and y directions need to equal zero. So, let's start, start this problem by finding the components of these forces and writing them in rectangular composition. Let's look at an easy one first, force P. We can clearly see that force P has no horizontal component because it's pointed straight down along the negative y direction. So, force P is simply 0 pounds along the x-axis and negative 500 pounds along the y-axis, right? Because the force is going down and therefore we can indicate that the force is going along the negative y-axis. Next, we can break force Q into its components. In the x-direction, we have 650 pounds times the sine of 40 degrees and in the y direction we have 650 pounds times the cosine of 40 degrees. The y component of force Q is negative because it's going along the negative y axis. So when we simplify this down we get 417.8 pounds in the i direction and 497.9 pounds in the negative y direction. Next, let's move on to the two unknown forces, FA and FB. Although we don't know the magnitude of these forces, we can still break them down into components by writing out their components in terms of the magnitudes of FA and FB. If that sounds confusing, don't worry. It's much easier to show you. So let's take a look at force A. It has components in the negative x direction and the positive y direction. FA would be equal to the magnitude of FA times the cosine of 50 degrees in the negative i direction plus the magnitude of FA times the sine of 50 degrees in the positive y direction. So let's move on to our last force FB. The components of force B are simply the magnitude of FB in the positive i direction. There is no component of force B that acts in the y direction. Well, that makes our life a little easier. All right, so now that we have all of our forces broken up into components, we need to solve for the magnitudes of FA and FB. Well, remember these equations? Well, we can use them to solve for our magnitudes. We have these two equations, and we also have two unknowns in our equations, FA and FB. Let's clear up the screen a bit and focus on what we need to do next. We can use our equations to solve for FA. You can choose to summate either the forces in the x direction or y direction first. Since the y direction only has one unknown, let's solve for that first. We have negative 500 pounds from force P negative 497.9 pounds from force Q, FA sine of 50 from force FA, and zero from force FB. Remember, we sum all the J components since these are the ones in the Y direction. The summation of all the components in this direction need to equal zero for the particle to be in equilibrium in at least the Y direction. If we simplify and solve for the only unknown in this equation, we find that the magnitude of FA is 1,303 pounds. Alright, 
so now let's move on to the summation of forces in the x direction to determine what the magnitude of FB is. We have zero from, from the P force, 417.8 pounds from the Q force, uh, minus FA times cosine 50 degrees, plus FB. We already know what the magnitude of force FA is, so we can substitute that into this equation. When we solve for FB, we find that it is equal to 420 pounds.